very happy with our vehicle, John. What a way to hit town. Yeah, it's a great little vehicle, Heather. Beauty. This raced at Longford back in the early 1960s. So Longford was into car racing? My word, we were into car racing. We was into car racing right up until 1968. John Tolbert was born in Longford, where his grandparents owned the local garage. The perfect place to be when the world's greatest drivers hit town. Grand Prix drivers come from all over the world to compete here at Longford. We had the Jim Clarks, the Graham Hills, the Jackie Stewarts, of course Jack Brabham, he, he was here as well. All the great Grand Prix drivers drove here and they loved the circuit. We're on the Grand Prix track right now, Heather. How fast can we go? You can go as fast as you like. Longford's country roads had become so popular for motor racing in the early 50s that it was awarded the 1959 Australian Grand Prix, cementing its legendary status. Brabham roars down the flying mile at over 160, and at the moment he's travelling like a winner. It was an era when guts, courage and speed took precedence over safety for both the drivers and spectators. Thousands crammed the streets every year, trying to get a glimpse of their idols, like three-time Formula One world champion, Australian Jack Brabham. Away go the 16 starters on the first of their 25 laps. The last event was held in 1968. But so excited was the generation of kids watching on, like John, that they've never let it go. Here we are, Heather. We're right in the thick of things at the Longford Motorama 2021. Look at the crowd of the people. It's packed. Some of the cars were of the era when the races were here uh, in the 60s and in the 50s. So it's a great turnout. What a way to start. What a way to hit town. I love it. For one weekend a year, Longford turns into a petrol head's dream showing off their metal muscle and trying to reignite the mood of those Grand Prix glory days. <laughs> For the cost of a month's wages, anyone could enter one of the weekend's races. Some in the family car and others in the state-of-the-art racing cars of the day. It made Longford an incredibly exciting place to be. We're now heading for the village, and we shut off early here at the 200-yard marker because the hump in the road will make you airborne. Well, when we were kids, we used to sit up on that bank eating the blackberries that are still there. And the racing cars, the motorbikes, the sidecars used to come down here at about 100 mile an hour. They'd hammer on the anchors because they've just come from a really steep hill. And then they've got to find their way through here. And this is called the Viaduct. It's probably one of the best known landmarks of the Longford racing circuit. Journalist and Longford boy Neil Kearney is writing a book about the race. Another effort to try and keep the memories alive. And to get through here, you really had to sneak past. They'd all sort of scrape those bricks on the way past. Actually, some of them, Heather, didn't quite make it past the bricks and lots finished up in the willow trees over here. Brabham, Hill and Mattage lead through the viaduct and Bruce McLaren, who started from the rear of the grid, has shot through the field to pass Stilwell and move into fourth place. The cool Englishman won't let Brabham get far away, but the Australian is looking confident. Jack Brabham described it as horrifying but beautiful. And that's what it was. It was an amazingly dangerous circuit. So why did it all stop? Well, I guess it had to stop in the end. In 1968, safety measures were starting to come into Formula One. Too many drivers have been killed. The deadly decades of the 60s and 70s, most of the champions like McLaren and Hill, Clark, all these drivers had got killed. So they had to smarten up the sport 
And Longford could never adapt to that. But it was 14 glorious years, and it was 14 years that I'll never forget. Longford is still doing what it's always done. And it will forever be obsessed with cars. These old racing cars really have become part of Longford's identity, just like the rest of the town's long history. The locals seem determined to keep their heritage and traditions alive. And if they can maintain the level of passion that I've seen, I reckon they're on the right track. Thank you.